Jesse will be introduced by <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Taylor Lee, and I will be presenting today's speaker, Bill Zimmerman. Bill Zimmerman received his undergraduate degree at IUP and then went on to receive his master's degree here at Penn State. He is a lecturer in the College of Communication, where he teaches public relations, where he covers news releases to the media. He also worked for nearly 10 years as a reporter before working in Penn State's Office of Strategic Communications. His most recent endeavor was in 2018 when he launched Happy Valley Hustle, which is a podcast celebrating entrepreneurship and education in Pennsylvania. Everyone welcome Bill Zimmerman. Thanks a lot, Taylor. Well, thanks a lot for inviting me. Really fun to talk about this. Starting a podcast for me is probably one of the, the best decisions I've made from a personal and professional standpoint. And, and we're going to kind of talk about that, the things, the way that I've kind of grown, uh, the cool people I've gotten to meet, the platform I've gotten to give to the cool people that I already know. Um, so really going to talk about, you know, podcasts, some of the, the things that you can accomplish through a podcast that may not be apparent to you. You know, I think a, a lot of people, a podcast is about entertainment, uh, but can, can accomplish, for the people creating the, the podcast, it can accomplish uh, a lot more than that. So I'm a lecturer in the College of Communications. Um, so I teach a digital PR class, and I talk about podcasting in there, and a lot, particularly about how brands use it. Uh, and that's one way that we can kind of talk, learn a lot about the power of this, this medium. So what I want to talk about today is uh, why, why you should consider a podcast. And this is something that I think that uh, a lot of people could justifiably have an entry into this. You may not think this is your, uh, has any place for you, but I think it does. Um, how do you get started and how do you keep this going? Because that's one of the big things. The growth is probably not going to be explosive. How do you nurture it? How do you be patient? How do you carry it along and hopefully build something? And so what, what's going to inform a lot of my experience today is the podcast that I launched and what I've learned from it. Uh, and, and I've learned a lot. And, and including um, how to kind of uh, maybe adjust my idea of what success is. And we'll talk about that soon. But my podcast, the, the, what I say at the beginning of every episode, the podcast that tells the stories of people running their own businesses, launching side hustles, and making the digital age work for them. Um, so I like that. Getting, formulating, forming that introduction in my head was so important in doing this podcast because that gave me a very easy, concise way to explain this to people that never heard an episode. Uh, and it helps me kind of cast a wide net of who I can include as a guest. So yes, it's heavy on entrepreneurship, but it could be somebody that just writes books on the side uh, or somebody who just is very savvy with the digital world. Put new episodes out on the first and third Wednesday of every month. It's available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all the, the usual players in, in podcasting. Um, big project I did this uh, part, uh, was for personal branding was launched a website at the beginning of the year, so I had a good platform to promote the podcast. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to get a little bit of local media attention from outlets like uh, Onward State to talk about the podcast. And that's when I began to, to kind of realize that I think I was on to something good uh, when the press recognizes it as newsworthy as something different, as something that's not uh, being done readily in the community. These are some of my most recent episodes, get, just to give you a sense of the type of people I profile. Uh, Michael Olmsted, he's actually the, the general manager at Bill Pickles downtown. Um, but he has this fun side hustle where he organizes fun road races, like a wine run uh, and a donut dash that's coming up this Saturday at the, the Grange Fair. Grange Fairgrounds and Center Hall if you're interested. Um, this is not something that he's making a ton of money off of, but it's fun. He likes to run. He likes to get people together. These things are a blast, and for him, it's a side hustle that's been very fulfilling. David Housley is a guy that works in, in the uh, technology area over at World Campus, but he's a pretty accomplished uh, writer as well, a poet, uh, and he, with several other people, produces a literary journal called Barrel House. Um, so again, a pretty interesting side hustle that this guy has, something that really scratches a creative itch. So why you should consider a podcast? One of the biggest things is really if you're doing something interview-based or even if it's just solo, it's really going to help you develop your communication skills because you're constantly thinking about the listener. Okay? It's going to get pretty boring if you just sit there and record your musings about, about life or whatever. So when you communicate through a podcast, you're always thinking about providing value 
what from my experience could inform somebody else's uh, life? What could somebody learn by me sharing my experience, by speaking with candor? Uh, or for me, when I do an interview, what can I pull out of this person that's going to be valuable for others to hear? Because if I bring a guest on and they just go on and on about their life and go on about their successes, there's not much to learn from that. So I'm trying to get them to talk about times where things didn't go well. Uh, I'm trying to get them to talk about their journey, about frustration in their life. I'm trying to get them to share tips that have been useful for them, whether it's uh, productivity or, or self-belief, you know, personal mantras. I'm trying to pull out something of value for the listener. Great way to develop connections as well. I, I read a book called uh, Profitable Podcasting recently, and the writer of that talks about podcasting being a, a kind of a Trojan horse. So if you were doing an interview-based podcast in your industry, uh, say so maybe something like cybersecurity, and you want to interview people from some of the top companies, um, you can do that. You create this show, you create content, and then on kind of the, the backside there, you're developing relationships that may be fruitful in the future. Maybe this is you finding a future client or a future job. Um, it has this, this ability to be kind of a way, I don't want to use the word kind of sneak, sneak in there, but a way to just start off with an interview that could lead to something that could be really beneficial for you in the future. It's great at getting you to learn about creating value. Um, and this is really important if you're trying to do that sort of stuff to help your personal brand, whether it's blogging, uh, vlogging, whatever. Um, always thinking about what you can give to the listener. That's how people are going to keep coming back. And a way to establish thought leadership, to really kind of carve your piece out of your industry as the person that's knowledgeable about a particular subject. Podcasting can be a great, a great platform to establish that. Of course, there, there are others. You do it through writing, um, producing video, um, just having a really lively Twitter account where you share articles and comment on things. Um, these are some of the, way, the, the things you could accomplish through a podcast. Before we keep going, who, who uh, raise a show of hands, who regularly listens to a podcast? Let's just say on a weekly basis. All right, cool. Uh, what, what's your, what are you typically listening to? Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Hanson, yeah. Chris Hanson, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't see that one. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing about a podcast. You can launch it and, and adapt and change the format and tweak it. Um, you're probably going to want to just keep playing with it to, to, to get it to where it's uh, at its best. Uh, who had their hand up over here? Yeah. Well, what, what are you listening to right now? Uh, part of my day. Okay. Sports focused, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about over here? Who had their hand up? Yeah. Okay, Joe Rogan, practically every class I talk to, he listens to that. One of the amazing things about Joe Rogan is he can get you to listen for two and a half to three hours, which is, is a lot, lot to, to ask people. Um, but boy, it, it, it's, it's amazing that he can do that. Yeah, okay. All right. Anybody on this side? Yeah, what do you got? Okay. All right. I mean, we're hearing there's so much variety, some stuff that's just purely entertainment, some that you can learn from. Uh, you know, it's, there, there's so much that can be done in this space. And, it, and, it can be, and you can go very niche with it as well. Um, this can be a way to celebrate uh, things that are maybe very geeky or very archaic. Uh, or for my podcast, to go super local with it. And for me, that was a, that was a good decision. So, so again, making this case for what you can learn from podcasting, um, this is, uh, I, I, I compare it to the kind of cross training here. You gaining a lot of different skills. So communication, definitely. Audio editing, you're going to learn some very audio, um, some audio editing basics. I use a platform called Audacity that's available free online to anyone. Um, it is very basic. If I tried to use something like Adobe Audition, I would probably be pretty lost and confused. Um, I want to eventually improve and learn how to use better software, but for right now, I'm just using the basics. Really helps you with your writing skills. You have, I put a lot of time into writing a very compelling title for my episodes and writing good show notes. Right? So, that's, so I try to really 
do a good job of wrapping up what that episode was about and writing, giving it a title that's going to get somebody to listen. And that means always making a title that focuses on what people can get out of that by listening. What are they going to learn? <sighs> Learning social media platforms, you've got to try to drive people to listen to this podcast so you learn how to make good, compelling social media posts that's hopefully going to intrigue somebody. Learning some analytics involved, your podcasting hosting service is going to provide you with a lot of details on uh, how many listens you're getting, where people are listening, what devices they're using. Um, so that's important. You know, if, do, should your, your social media share the link to iTunes or Google Play? Well, you can look at the analytics and see where, what platform are people using most, and that's going to help you figure out which, what's the best one to promote. Some people are using video to, pr to promote podcasts. A lot of podcasters will produce um, audiograms, basically visual representations of audio that you see sound waves and maybe a photograph and captions. Uh, but some people are just putting their podcast entirely on, on YouTube like, uh, like Joe Rogan does. And you can dip your toe in media relations, public relations here, if the press reaches out and um, wants to publicize what you're doing. And you can also take the initiative and reach out to them, like I've done. I want to introduce a quick case study here to, to, to really continue to drive the point home about podcasting's value. This is Matt Swain. He was the first person I interviewed for the podcast. Another guy that's a full-time employee of Penn State but has a cool side hustle. He writes books, writes books about the paranormal, and that's a pretty booming genre in podcasts. So he's frequently finding himself being interviewed on podcasts about the paranormal to talk about his books. Every time he appears on these podcasts, he sells more books. And you see the figures there in yellow, um, Coast to Coast, uh, which also Coast to Coast has a terrestrial radio as well, so you can tune in right on your, your car radio to that. So it has a wider audience. One, episode, one appearance on there can sell, he sells between 100 and 200 books after that. Uh, 500 to, to 100 on the other one called the Paranormal Podcast. So for him, for writers, this is, podcasts are a great outlet. You pitch yourself to multiple shows. Sometimes they reach out to you. You get a chance to be interviewed for 45 minutes to an hour to talk about your work, and you get a chance to promote what you're doing. So for Matt, this is, this is a very good um, way. This is a very um, probably one of the most worthwhile platforms that he has to promote a book. So think about uh, you know, the kind of the normal routine for writers back in the day. You had to sit there at Barnes & Noble and set up a table and hope people came and talked to you and bought a book and maybe asked for you to sign it. This is a much more efficient way to promote yourself. I want to share some quick uh, some podcasting statistics. This company, Edison Research, is, is kind of the, the, the go-to for uh, a, an annual report on podcasting. I show you to, uh, to give um, show this to give you a sense of how podcasts are growing, um, and also why podcasts are super attractive uh, to people in the business world. So what you see here is just, uh, I love that they asked this question, just finding out how many people are just familiar with the word podcasting. 64%, um, it continues to grow, but still a lot of people don't have any idea what the heck this even is. Uh, and that shows that if you are going to create a podcast, depending on your target audience, part of that may be educating people on just what the heck a podcast is and how you access it. I hear a lot of podcasters just talk about, hey, it's the purple button or the purple thing on your iPhone there. Everyone has it. You click on that. I hear a lot of podcasters, too, explain it as um, audio on demand you know, or radio on demand, which I think is a great way of explaining it to people. You can come in and have a seat, man. I'm, I, you look very uncomfortable there. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so the, the, the amount of people who've ever listened to a podcast, only at 44% right now, so still pretty low. But you see it's continuing to climb. Monthly podcasting listens uh, by demographic. So you see age 25 to 54, which really encompasses that, that sweet spot that the majority of marketers are looking for. Those are the people who listen to podcasts. This uh, graph represents uh, the, the average uh, earning of podcast listeners. We're seeing the, the statistics show that podcast listeners earn more than, uh, typically earn more than the average population. So people who listen to podcasts have more money to spend, more, more uh, disposable income. And with that, you have podcasting as a platform to advertise to them. And one of the really attractive things, the majority of people say that they either listen to the entire episode or listen to most of it. Okay, So that's why you hear people 
putting ads in the beginning, ads in the middle, ads at the end. Uh, people are sticking with podcasts, so that makes it pretty attractive if you want to get a, a sales message to them. So a little bit about how brands are using this. Um, these are very creative ideas. It really falls on when you hear um, nowadays talked about as content marketing, where brands are putting out things that are not heavy on promotion. They're not heavy on uh, all the details about the products and services that they offer. Uh, and it's more about storytelling. It's more about establishing the brand in, that, uh, in their field, in their industry. So some examples here, Casper, they make mattresses. They did, you can imagine how deadly it would be, a podcast about mattresses. So they hired a comedian to just um, tell, to invite people to share stories about their screwed up dreams. They were inviting people to submit them through, through the internet, uh, and they read them on air and laugh, laughed about them and joked about them, invited people to come and, uh, and you know, try to unpack what was happening in their dream. Uh, so, you know, and you know, there would certainly be messaging there about Casper Mattress. They'd probably share promo codes, probably direct you to the website. But the star of this show was really stories. Microsoft has a uh, podcast about kind of the future of tech. Um, you'll see these repeatedly. Uh, this company, Gimlet, is, a, is one of the major players when it comes to uh, uh, producing podcasts. Same with this company, Earwolf. So, so brands are partnering with these um, distribution networks that already can get them a big audience. Uh, Tinder has one called Define This Relationship that's just about dating in the modern world. Uh, Damon John working, uh, working with ZipRecruiter for a show you know, just about entrepreneurship. Um, eBay has a show about telling the stories of people who have used eBay to make money. Uh, Blue Apron, whole podcast about what we eat. One at the top there is from a Long Longwood University, produced a podcast to, to help students figure out what to do after graduation. We talk about delivering value, um, that could be really useful. A few more here, I won't go through all of them. Um, Duolingo has a podcast. Um, Sephora, Travel, uh, Marriott has a podcast all about the designs in some of their top uh, hotels. Um, so, so telling the stories about some of the most um, impressive, groundbreaking architectural designs you could find in their properties. Um, McDonald's did one very focused on just one kind of interesting story in their history about this uh, Szechuan sauce. Um, and uh, many people know that the, the connection with the Rick and Morty show several year, uh, about a year or two ago. Um, basically, this was a, something that they introduced for only a brief amount of time, and when they pulled it, um, people got really angry about it. So, and this is just basically the whole story about that campaign, what happened, um, so really heavy on storytelling. Uh, Jack Daniels, one about um, the making of uh, distilling whiskey. Trader Joe's, which is just all about kind of the the inside look at the store and how things operate and, and how things are done. So, so brands are doing some pretty cool things with this. Um, Lyft over there too is a good one. You can imagine what the weird stories that Lyft drivers have to tell. Um, this is a, a platform to capture those. So brands are doing some pretty creative things. And some of these are created as a limited run. Maybe they're 10 episodes. They're, maybe, they're not always designed to run for forever. Um, or until they, till they peter out. Um, it's usually, um, sometimes it's just about um, creating some, a quick run of content. So another brand that's working in this space, Buffer, uh, they, they have uh, social media management solutions, so they have a, a platform there, uh, and they do a lot with putting, uh, with establishing thought leadership, doing a lot so that you see them as the authority on social media things. So they're doing a lot of research. And, and one of this is, is producing a podcast where they can share that research and have people uh, in their office, their strategic partnership manager and their PR manager, they have them each week, 15 minute episodes, sharing tips on social media. So I reached out to Brian one time on Twitter. He was quick to respond. Uh, and I really just, just wanted to ask him about what this show accomplishes and if it moved the needle at all in, in, from a sales standpoint. <laughs> And you can see what he said there. You know, uh, the podcast, bless you, has been incredible from a brand awareness and thought leadership perspective. They're getting more than 18,000 plus downloads a week. Um, hard to measure from an acquisition perspective, but we have lots of faith. So no hard evidence that this has done anything to help them um, get customers, but it's 
been great for getting for driving awareness of the buffer brand and establishing them as an authority on all things social media. So for me, the, my, my kind of lesson at this point, really to kind of broaden your vision of success. So when I started this thing, what do you think was maybe one of my, one of my goals? Any ideas? Try to, try to get into my, my head here. What do you think one thing I was hoping to accomplish with this? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that, was, that was definitely part of it. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, that was a big one. You guys are giving me way too much credit. I was hoping to sell some ad space and make a little bit of money with this thing. <laughs> All right? That was something I was hoping. I don't know why I, had, I was convinced I would do that, that would happen. You know, I was like, I'm going to go to tell somebody, hey, um, around 80 to 100 people are listening to this episode. This is, this is really, you know, I can give you a really great audience here that you can sell your ads to. Um, no, that hasn't happened. Uh, in fact, I've spent a lot of money on, the, on this, you know, um, buying equipment, sell, uh, buying a promoted post on social media. I haven't made any money on this. Um, but that was something I thought about and was really not, um, not wise. I didn't do enough research to know that, that that's pretty unlikely, um, that you really have to build a giant audience if you really wanted to make a little money from ads. But this was by no means a failure um, as I started really thinking about what I gained from this. And it was everything that, that all of you mentioned. Um, that was what made this really worthwhile for me. So this is just kind of, this is just kind of showing the progression of how this worked. I launched my podcast. Um, it was seen as something interesting enough that other podcasters, like uh, Higher Ed Social and Rob Z Radio, who has a, a very po popular podcast that he does out of Altoona, Pennsylvania. Um, so I was getting interviewed on other podcasts. That was awesome. Gave me a chance to talk about this. Gave a chance to talk about my mission. Gave a chance to, for me to talk about some of that kind of higher-minded stuff and, and things I wanted to do, like inspire people and give people um, an idea of, of that they could do um, you know, entrepreneurship and launch a side hustle that scratches an itch that's not being met at, at their job. Um, it was interesting enough that local media like Town & Gown Magazine and State College Magazine gave me some publicity. Um, and it's created awesome connections like with the launch box on Allen Street and the people from Startup Week who invited me to do something like this. So not making any money from the podcast, but I have really been, um, I've been paid in so many other ways with connections uh, to, to other great, to uh, connections to great people, the opportunity to do awesome stuff like this. So really think about uh, how, what success could mean. So many different things. It's helped me improve communication skills. Help me to help me to network, and it's just been a lot of fun as well. And making that decision to to make my podcast hyper local, you know, there was probably other topics I would rather talk about, but there are things that are in uh, that have been flooded on on podcasting. So it would have been really tough for me to carve a niche out in the in the, the landscape of podcasts. But I didn't know of anybody doing an interview based podcast in State College. Um, so for me, it was all about, you know, by focusing local, I felt like that was my best way to make a mark. And part of, of making a really local podcast is you kind of become a, a, a piece, maybe a cog in the wheel of helping organize fruitful connections between people. So this is just an example here. So my podcast is in the middle. These are logos representing different people that I've spoken with. Uh, so the guys, uh, Penn State, um, you know, uh, alums who started a, uh, a company called Fosvolutions, uh, Brad Grosnick, who organizes the Pop-Up Ave uh, flea market that's happening in a, in a few weeks downtown, uh, Springboard, which is an incubator in Belfont, and, and so on. Um, and the red lines indicate these connections that I know of between these people that I've interviewed. So Pop-Up Avenue um, has, does a lot with the Center Foundation. Um, Brad Grosnick from Pop-Up Avenue gives pro bono PR advice to the Center Foundation when they're doing their big fundraising. Um, he also, at his flea market, stay apparel company out of Hershey, always has a table there. Um, so these connections weren't necessarily uh, to blame for my podcast. Some of them do kind of unfold because, because of that. Um, I'm hearing anecdotally stories from people who, you know, oh, I listened to this podcast, so I reached out to this person, and now they're coming to speak to my class. Um, so this has been a great way to kind of um, 
improve this network, improve connections between like-minded people. And talking about success, you know, not making money, but when you get feedback like this, uh, that makes it pretty awesome. Uh, when somebody tells you that they learned something from the podcast or something that cheered them up, whatever, this makes you feel like, yeah, this has been a success. Uh, and it's also, you know, for me to maybe complain or get down about not having as many listeners as I would like, um, I just try to focus on the people that are listening regularly and are getting something out of it. That's what helps keep you going. So how to start with this? Um, I can't say enough about strategy, creating some sort of plan. Um, it can be as simple as writing what your opening statement is going to be. And for me, that's what really helped kind of solidify it all. Coming up with the thing you're going to say at the beginning of the episode, that really helps you get down to the point of why you're doing this. You need to find a home for it. Um, you probably most likely, um, you can find, there are free apps like uh, Anchor that makes it very easy to produce a, a, a podcast on your phone and submit it to, to all the podcasting services, like uh, all the, po the podcasting catalogs like iTunes and Google Play. Um, but you can also pay for um, podcasting hosts that cost around $10 a month. And that gives you, that's where all the data associated with your, your podcast lives. Um, so, and they give you a lot more kind of uh, capabilities to customize. I'd encourage you to buy inexpensive equipment um, in case this is something that's not for you. Uh, doesn't know, you could you know, at least maybe buy a cheap external microphone, but you could also record them just from your iPhone. Um, if this is something you love, if this is something that really gets you excited, that stuff can come later. And execute that plan. Put it, put it into practice and, and keep, keep honing it, keep coming up with new ideas for how to make it, uh, make it better. So this was, this was something I created before I had any episodes that I could direct somebody to. This was, again, just a statement about what this show is about and in a, in a little biography about myself. So for me, I was just trying to clearly explain to a potential uh, guest what the show's about and trying to establish a little credibility on my part. Why, why, they, why would they want to talk to me? Um, telling, showing them I'm a journalist. I have experience interviewing people. I work in communications. Um, that's, what I was, that's what I was going for. So something like this, very simple to make, can be very powerful in getting you kind of those first people to, to, to buy in. So I mentioned the hosting service that you need to provide. There's some examples there. Um, Anchor, cheapest one. SoundCloud, doesn't got, cost you anything either. Um, the others like Buzzcast and Lispin, Libsyn, you're going to have to pay a little bit for. Um, some sort of microphone works best. Uh, the, the Blue Yeti, does anyone have one of these? Uh, I see several hands. You can find them at any Best Buy. Um, it's a good, good way to start. Um, editing software, you can go very easy, Audacity, GarageBand, available for you for free, and you can go to these more sophisticated ones. And, you know, very easy to get podcast art, to get a design. Um, I think I, I found a guy on Fiverr in the Netherlands to, uh, to design my logo. Um, anyone use Fiverr before? I see a few hands. Big fan of that. Um, very easy, uh, you know, basically a marketplace of creative people selling everything from... Uh, you know, graphic design to, you know, um, editing services to your, for your book project. Very cool. So for me, it was re I really wanted to resist that, that fear of gear, uh, which I, I just love that expression. Um, that should not be the thing that prevents you from exploring something that you're into. If you want to explore photography, use your iPhone every chance you get before you invest in a, you know, a few thousand dollars in a DSLR camera. Uh, you know, just see if this is something you're, you can stick with. Um, so there's the microphone I use. It cost me about $30 on, on Amazon. Uh, just a dual lavalier uh, clip-on mic. Um, and, you know, as I go on, maybe buy, buy some better stuff. Uh, but for right now, that's good enough. So how you keep this going? A big part of this is committing to a routine. And you will see this. There are successful podcasts out there that have an irregular schedule. Um, sometimes they're just that good that their audience will, will tolerate, you know, maybe one coming out. Um, you know, once a week and then, you know, months between episodes. But if you're, really, if you're starting out, you're really starting to establish credibility, you got to have some routine. Um, I got the sense that producing a, po a weekly podcast would be a ton of work, so I just committed to doing two a month. Um, and, but, always, but establishing that and so far never, never wavering from it. It's fine to revive, revive, uh, refine your plan. I've been lately trying to make my interviews much shorter uh, because I think 45 minutes is about the, about the, the ideal time to, to listen. Sometimes even go shorter. 
because um, some of them are getting to be more than an hour. Um, so I'm always kind of kind of tweaking things, and that's that's the fun of this. Every you know, if, uh, those of you who listen to podcasts a lot, um, go back and listen to the first episode sometime of the one that you're into, and it's probably. Um, Totally different. They may have different hosts. It may be unlistenable. It may be have poor sound quality. Um, people are still finding their way. You have to drive awareness in some way. For me, it's been social media. It's been doing things like this and mentioning the podcast and hopefully grabbing a few more listeners. Um, always encouraging feedback. You know, find some friends that are that uh, respect you enough to give you an honest uh, assessment of what you're doing. Um, those people can be invaluable. Find your tribe. There are groups out there to help support you. Um, we've, I've been part of a kind of a loose group of local people that have been doing some podcasting. We kind of regularly get together. Um, we have a Facebook group. Um, we try to be there for each other to, to offer advice, um, help promote each other's work. Um, that sort of thing can go a long way. And cultivate the community that you've created through this podcast so far. Acknowledge those people. Make them feel like insiders. Communicate with them on social media. Um, don't just you know, be bugging them to, to rate, subscribe, and review. Um, interact with them. Ask for them for, to, for feedback that maybe you would read on the air. Um, read you know, reviews on the air. Make sure that they know that they're heard. You know, if anybody ever comments on something that you share on social media or messages you on social media, make sure you respond. So when it comes to driving awareness, social media is really huge for this. And if you don't have a giant audience, uh, you need to have a pretty savvy grasp of, of hashtags so that you can kind of, those people who are searching for topics like entrepreneurship uh, can track you down. Good to find these niche groups out there. So thinking like, um, anybody, any Reddit fans in here? All right, see a few hands. You're a man, man. You, 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 everything I ask, you're, you're down. I like it. Um, but Reddit, you can find these very niche discussions on on various topics, and sometimes you can go and pitch your work on there. Uh, so for example, I did a podcast with Brian Allen. He is an illustrator based out of Belfont. He is the father of Gritty, the mascot for the Philadelphia Flyers. That is his design. Um, so I interviewed him, and I promoted that podcast on a subreddit for Philadelphia Flyers hockey, and I even found a Gritty subreddit that's out there and, put the, and pr promoted the podcast on there. Um, so you have to be careful. If you're, a little, if you're too self-promotional on, on Reddit, they will tear you apart. Um, so it forces you to think about posting in a way that you're about providing value. Encourage guests to share. Um, this is sometimes an exercise in um, you know, having no shame in, in talking up what you're doing as much as possible and never resisting an opportunity to promote. Um, so always asking others to share, especially your guests. Because a way that you grow sometimes is you, you hook a guest that has a following far bigger than yours, somebody that has a social media following of a few tens, uh, tens of thousands, uh, and you ask them to share. And sometimes that can be a big way of driving awareness. Seek other podcasts you know, there, uh, that you could be a guest on. Uh, that, that sort of thing has been really enjoyable to be interviewed by somebody else. I feel like it makes me a better podcaster and try to generate media attention. So I, I've done this, I've written, I work in PR, or I teach PR, I've written news releases to try to get um, you know, recognized by some, you know, get, to get maybe a write-up in the Central PA Business Times, something like that. So far, the, those have been unsuccessful, but I have gotten some attention from people who've reached out to me from, from local publications. So that's been, um, you know, it's validating when somebody <coughs> deems it um, enough of something to write an article about. So these are, uh, these are two of my favorite podcasters right here, uh, Jimmy Wisman and James Petragallo. They are comedians based out of Phoenix. Um, and this is really, this kind of shows you the potential that a podcast that can cultivate a, gr a community among fans, that fans feel heard, um, and that fans feel like they're getting something from these podcasts. Uh, these guys are popular enough that they can travel the country and do live episodes. Um, and they have also mobilized people to support them on Patreon. Anyone familiar with, with Patreon? All right, I'm going to go to you again. What's Patreon? Uh, Patreon is like the platform that a lot of like, creators, like, mainly on YouTube that I know, use to help fund or like, subsidize the cost behind some of the products they do. Like, uh, a lot of animators, for example, like, on YouTube use Patreon because the way YouTube's algorithm is set up, they can't really make videos like, really quick and really long ones. Okay. So they have 
editing and stuff like that. But basically, it's just a way you can like donate money to people that you love so they can do the yeah. thing. Yeah, and, and, and what you said there, people you love, there has to be a connection there. I mean, you can't, you can imagine just, you know, asking for money. People have to feel, uh, so for them, it's a lot about feeling like an insider. If you support them on Patreon, they're going to read your name each episode and give you credit as an executive producer. They may make a joke about your last name. They, you know, they may t talk about how great you are, whatever. Um, people feel that these guys, that they're, they're supporting two dudes that are doing um, fun work. One of the guys, you know, has a day job and everything. So you really feel like you are supporting a creative person who brightens your day, who gives you a lot of enjoyment. Um, so these guys have really, they've really nailed it. Um, and it works very similar to if you're not familiar, like, like a crowdfunding platform. People give money and they get something. Um, recognition, exclusive content, um, there's an exchange there. And a big lesson with podcasting is really to kind of leave your ego at the door. Um, you will be humbled eventually, whether it's by, you know, talking to people who have no idea what a podcast is or seeing how your listenership is not quite where you would hope it would be, um, you know, po putting a, something out on social media and it getting no response. Um, this is really a point where you, um, you just get away from that. Uh, so for me, it was nice to get this, uh, a write-up in Town & Gown magazine. Does anyone read this magazine? Hey, all right, I got a hand. Well, that Jordan is not a student, so it doesn't count. But yeah, this is not... Uh, is, we'll just say it has a little bit of an, an older readership, um, but it's been around for probably 50, 60 years in State College, very respected publication. Did a nice feature story on everybody who's doing podcasts. I even got my photo in there, um, and this really didn't do anything to kind of uh, improve listeners from, from what I could find. Um, so it was kind of, you know, I was all excited about this and hoping that I could hook some more fans, and it really didn't have any impact. And I'm still kind of trying to, to figure out why. Uh, was it that, that the audience is just not about podcasts? Um, I'm not sure. So sometimes, you know, you can get this great success, uh, and it's and it's still not not quite what you uh, which, what you envisioned. Now, another thing I did here was, uh, you know, trying to. I, I really uh, this was something I should have did from the beginning, but I just created a two-page document to show future guests what they're in for. Um, and this is something I've been really, really happy that I pulled together, just letting them know about how they can promote it, um, what the kind of the tone is going to be. I try to establish that it's going to be very relaxed, um, that you're pretty much just talking about your life experience, and this should be really easy. Um, but really, it's just all about establishing credibility and putting them at ease. If you want to go further with this, if you really want to improve your, your competency when it comes to podcasts, there's lots of ways to do it. There are podcasts about podcasting. Um, there are blogs about it. You can subscribe to newsletters. There are Facebook groups and subreddits. Um, and there are conferences like, like Podcast Movement, uh, which I just submitted a proposal to give a presentation on local, uh, on a hyper-local podcast. So I should find out by, I think, this week whether they'll accept that or not. So I'm really hoping they do. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of ways for people now to, to share information and to learn things. All right, I want to save some time for questions. This is how you can listen to the show. Subscribe, rate, review if you have time. Um, and, and please, give me your feedback, you know, good or bad. I would love to hear what you think uh, about how this podcast could be, could be made better. All right. With that, are there any questions? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think it was like late, late in 2017, and um, I was, so I was new to being a full-time faculty member. Um, I worked in Penn State in the public relations office. I got a master's degree in higher education while I was working, and I got a chance to teach some journalism classes as an adjunct. And when I did that, I realized I love teaching, and I wanted to make it uh, my full-time job, and eventually got it. Um, and with that, there was a little bit of a fear that as a full-time faculty member, I'd be totally removing myself from doing communications on a day-to-day -day basis. So I wanted to have some sort of project that was, you know, I didn't want to be seen as this, um, as a, a faculty member totally disconnected from the professional world. Um, so I thought it was personally important for me to have something that I was doing to show to my students that um, I was taking chances, that I was venturing into new things and and dealing with the, the frustrations of trying to build an audience and trying to grow um, so it was really about just wanting to continue to be doing something to, to continue to, to continue to be a creator um, you know because I was doing writing photography in my old job so I just wanted to keep making stuff
And, and it was something that seemed kind of unexplored. Yeah? No. <laughs> I think what I'm seeing now in my, my new vision is this really to be a, a personal branding platform that maybe in the future could help lead to maybe uh, consulting about communications or consulting specifically about podcasting or maybe getting uh, paid to give presentations and workshops and talks. So I think that's, that's where I'm kind of looking to now. Um, Rob Z, who I mentioned earlier, the guy who um, he's a, has a radio background and does a podcast out of Altoona, will regularly give uh, workshops in, in that area where you know, people will um, you know, pay, pay $50 to come listen to a two-hour workshop about how your, your small business can maximize social media, that, that sort of thing. So I think that's, for me, where uh, if I'm going to make any money from this, it, it, I think it's going to be that route. Yeah. Casper usually doesn't give specifics on how they have to market to an audience, so yeah. I don't know your audience base that well, but I'm yeah. assuming there might be some specialty flavor you could add to it to make it more attractive. Sure. Yeah, I've not looked looked into it too hard. I mean, I probably could try to you know beat the bushes and try to talk to some local you know business owners and see what they're up to yeah. or if they'd be willing to do something. Um, but something maybe more likely that I would look into is is some sort of uh, thing that is not, not a uh, monetary transaction. So Audible, uh, an audio book company, they will allow anybody to promote them and share a promo code to download you know, your, your first book free. Um, so anybody can do that. So maybe starting like that and kind of establishing that, hey, I'm willing to do this sort of thing could, could open things up. Um, one thing I do, uh, I have been trying, is creating an Amazon affiliate store. I don't know if anyone's familiar with this, but basically, you create a store on Amazon and you try to drive traffic to that through your blog, through your website, through your vlog. And if people make a purchase there, you get a percentage of that. A lot of money has to be spent on there for you to get any, anything. Um, but, but that's an option. And for me, that's created a really great opportunity for me to take the books that, that have been written by my guests and put them all in one spot. Um, so, so that gives an incentive for, for a future guest to say, hey, this is, I could help promote your book. Um, it makes it easy to have a one-stop spot for, for listeners to go and, and find books, you know, from uh, if they really connect with somebody. Um, but right now, that I haven't made any money with that either. Um, but I am I have it in my show notes. I mention it um, every so often. Yeah, that that's something that I, I don't I don't envision that people are that uh, pumped about the show yet, or that they would be willing to to chip in anything. Um, yeah, you want you want to know unless I try. Uh, there are some in podcasting who dismiss it as selling your soul, you know, <laughs> to, to go in there and try to, to drive, uh, drive support. Um, I think that's a, I think I still would, it would be too much of a blow to my ego to go in there and ask for a few bucks and, and to get, because it tells you how many patron, patrons you have at one time. And if that was just a big zero, that would that'd be a little harsh. So, so uh, maybe, maybe, maybe sometime. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe not so much of a business plan, but definitely a strategy um, where you kind of define what, what the, the vision of this is, the tone of it. Um, you maybe uh, come up with a, 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 ca a rough calendar of when you're going to post and who your first, uh, if, you're, if it's an interview-based folk podcast, who your first four or five you know, guests are going to be. Um, there's really a, a lot of value in, in putting a strategy out. Um, and, and then that's going to help you when you get started. You're going to seem so much more credible, um, so much more serious about what you're doing. Um, if you have this kind of vision in your head about what, what this thing is going to be and what you're, you're hoping to accomplish with it. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. So is there any weeks where you don't have a guest? And if so, when yeah. are you doing that around? Yeah, so I, I only do it on the first and third Wednesday of each, each month. Um, so I've always had a guest lined up. I try to record a handful in advance, um, but I have done some some solo podcasts. Um, I teach a uh, with a with a with a few other professors. We teach a entrepreneurial thinking class in uh, in Center County Jail. Um, so I did like a solo cast where I just kind of reflected on that. 
um, and I think I, I packaged it as uh, three things you can learn, three things that we're teaching inmates that you can learn from about entrepreneurship, something like that. So I've, I've tried to do a few solo ones, um, but again, I try to make sure that they're not too long, that they're not too uh, much um, just getting inside my head, and it's focused on, on value. Um, so I guess that's always there as an option if something fell through. If I, if I was out of luck, didn't have a guest, I could do something along those lines. So yeah, I'm trying to think resourcefully about this too. So last night I moderated a uh, panel discussion uh, for Startup Week yesterday, uh, and they're letting me use that, that uh, panel discussion for a podcast. Um, so to get the audio from that video. So um, I think about things like that too, how I can take advantage of things I'm already doing um, and, and put them out there. Yeah. You thought about actually <laughs> Yeah, I thought about that, that, that sort of thing, Have, it, but it's just, um, I find that it's the part I hate the most is trying to coordinate when to meet with people and find a location and all that, and to have somebody else in the, in the mix would be a pain. Um, if there are platforms like uh, one's called TriCast and another one's called uh, uh, Zencaster that makes it very easy to record uh, online, um, you know, where you, you, you have a link and you invite guests through there. So I think if I was just doing this entirely without, right now I'm trying to meet people in person. Um, if I wasn't doing that and could, it could just be you know, organized with a friend and say, hey, we're going to sit down and do this every, every Wednesday, you know, I, I could see doing that. Uh, but right now, just to make it easier on myself, I'm just going to keep, keep it me interviewing someone. <coughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it's a great idea to, to play around with the format sometimes and invite a guest here and there. It would be a good idea. Yeah? Who's your favorite guest? Oh, my favorite guest... Um, I really like the guy I just talked to about the, the company called Left Right Repeat, the, the side hustle, organizing fun runs. I just found his story really cool. Um, he, he's a guy like me who's uh, a little on the heavier side, but that hasn't stopped him from running. You know, we're, we're what's called a, the Clydesdale division. If you're over 200 pounds, there's actually a division for it. Um, so he's just a really fun guy that, that really recognizes that there's something pretty awesome about these kind of community runs that, that bring people together. So I just really enjoyed talking to him. And he was also one that um, the first few questions didn't yield totally what I was looking for. I was maybe hoping he would go a little bit more in depth. And we eventually hit our stride, you know, as, as I kind of kept following up with questions and he got more comfortable. So when you see that happen, that can be a, a beautiful thing. And I really like talking to the, to the guy who made Gritty for the Philadelphia Flyers because it was really, I mean, this is, think about the position that he was in. Something he made has become just part of pop culture. It's been a pop culture phenomenon. It was a question on Jeopardy. It was, you know, on the Jimmy Fallon show. And, 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 it would, and just to hear a little bit about what that ride was like was really fun. Yeah. Anyone else? Be happy to stick around and uh, talk to you about anything. Also, try to encourage you to, uh, to enter the wonderful world of podcasts. All right. Thanks a lot.